we uh, uh, wrote the piece, uh, popular culture, digital archives and the social life of data, co-authored that with Roger Burrows, um, for a number of reasons. The first one being that um, there was a lot of discussion of transactional data at the time, which is a, it morphed into debates about big data, but when we were writing the paper there's quite a bit of stuff about transactional data around, and what we wanted to do was broaden out the debate to think about the different types of data that are accumulated about people, but particularly the data that's accumulating as a result of people's everyday engagements with culture and media, and trying to think about the way that data, the, the data themselves accumulate as a result of these everyday engagements. So we were trying to think about the nature of those accumulations, how they occurred, and how they, the data were being ordered in different ways. And that's what the, the starting point of the paper was. But also a development of some of the early work we'd done on Web 2.0 and trying to continue some of those debates onwards. And what we'd seen was there's quite a bit of stuff. We'd had this transactional data stuff on one side, and on the other side there was a lot of stuff about prosumption and um, playbook and the activity of people in a type of work, a type of production process that was part of their consumption practices within culture. So start to think about how you could bring those things together, to think about the way that the data were being formed and how they were accumulating and how they were circulating. That was kind of the starting point. So what we did was, in the first part of the paper, we tried to think through the nature of contemporary social media archives. And in order to do that, we created a kind of framework that allowed us to differentiate between the different types of archives, how they operated and what the underlying power structures and dynamics were within those archives. So we could see how the data were accumulated in those archives, but also how those archives ordered that data. And, and in the first half of the paper, we provide a framework, a table a di a, that allows uh, a typology to occur in which people can see the structures and the underlying dynamics within those archives to try to see how they're part of the underlying power structures of everyday life. So we started with that, and the first half of the paper is really tries to understand the accumulation of data tries to understand the way those data accumulate in different forms and in different ways and who, uh, who has control over those archives that are actually uh, shaping everyday life and everyday engagement with culture. That was the starting point, that's what we set up in the first half of the paper. But then the second half of the paper is where we get into the argument that we want to develop which is about what we've called in the paper the social life of data which comes off the special issue it's in on the, on the social life of methods. And this was about trying to understand what happens to data after it's accumulated. So what happens to this cultural data? It doesn't just end when it accumulates in an archive. What actually happens is it folds back into everyday life in different ways. And that's what we wanted to try to get at. How does this data kind of take on a life of its own? How does it ha take on a social life and become part of the social world in different ways? And we tried to map that in the second half of the paper through a series of examples. And one of the ways that, um, we wanted to think about the... Uh, the data that's accumulated in these everyday archives of social media, one of the ways we want to think was how that then becomes part of these everyday practices, becomes part of culture, reconstitutes culture in different ways. And that's what we tried to think of. How does data circulate back into culture in different ways once it's accumulated in these social media archives? And how does it reconstitute culture? So in other words, what we're looking at are the culture, we're trying to get a better understanding in this paper of the data themselves. So when people talk about big data or transactional data or the data, byproduct data as we've called it, what actually, uh, what form do these data take? What are they actually? What form do they take? What impact do they have? How are they reconstituted back into everyday lives in different ways? That's what we wanted to get at in this particular paper. How is it that that culture then, uh, that, that data actually becomes part of a kind of cultural analytics that's going on around us? So this is a paper really that tries to do two things. It tries to understand the data themselves, and when we're talking about big data or whatever else the phrase might be, trying to understand the data themselves, trying to understand how they are ordered within everyday archives and social media, and then trying to understand how they fold back into and circulate back into everyday life in different ways. And that's something we did here through the concept of the, the social life of data, and something I've tried to continue in the, the book Popular Culture and New Media, The Politics of Circulation, by thinking about an underlying politics of data circulation within culture and that's what we try to get at in this particular paper.